I've been speaking about employee benefits in a divorce. I spoke about restricted stock units and how those can be shared in a divorce. And then I spoke about employee stock options. Today, I'm going to talk about employee stock purchase plans. And these are fairly easy to understand compared to the last two products. Think about it this way. You can go and buy Tesla on the open market, and it would cost you $249 today, $249 a share. Or you could buy it through your employee stock purchase plan, which provides a 15% discount, and you're playing a little bit less. So the question is, why doesn't everyone sign up for these programs? And depending on the company, there's a lot of volatility in stock. And sometimes when people hold on to the stock, they see it not only go up, or go, but go down. As an example, uh, the 52-week low for Tesla is 138. The 52-week high is 271. So you could have bought it at the high, and now you're having to sell it. I was talking to my colleague, Steve Kirch, and he said when he used to buy stock through the purchase plan, he just did a quick turnaround. So he really wasn't holding the stock, which a lot of people can do. Now, if you're getting divorced and you have these stock, they're subject to equitable distribution. And so if you're the employee, you need to know you're going to share these. And if you're the spouse, you need to know that you're entitled to a portion of these shares. And how do you find that? You're going to find that in the statement of benefits. You may also see that on the pay stub when you're going to see that a certain portion of income went towards purchasing the shares. So if you're getting a divorce, these are important things to know, and it's up to you to find out this information because you will benefit from this in a divorce. It's on Jujasani for Divorce with Dignity Mediation Services, saving dollars, making sense.